my pleasure to introduce our key speakers for this very special session. Lindsey Green Barber is the CEO at Impact Architects. Um, and also joining us is Sonia Quick, who is the digital editor at Voice of OC. Now, I've had the, uh, the great pleasure and opportunity to work with both Lindsay and Sonia during the planning of this session. I'm extremely excited to hear all that Lindsay and Sonia have to share with you today. So without further ado, again, here is Lindsay and Sonia. Please take it away. Thank um, you, Jeffrey. Thanks, Jeffrey. Um, Great to be here. As Shepri said, I'm Lindsay with Impact Architects. We do strategy and research on media impact. Um, excited to see so many of you all here today for this conversation. Um, I'll let Sonia just introduce herself a bit more really quickly, and then we'll jump right into our programming for today. Hey, everyone. I'm Sonia. I work as digital editor at Voice of OC. We're a nonprofit in Orange County, and I do UX, engagement, marketing, and uh, fundraising here. That's a lot, a lot of things. Um, and today we are gonna do three things together. First, we're gonna do a little bit of learning. We're going to share some of how we have both approached learning about impact strategy and measurement in um, newsrooms and in various organizations. Um, Sonia is gonna share uh, for a bit of a see how telling your impact story can lead to financial sustainability in particular. Um, and then we're gonna jump right in and actually have you all start to put some of this into action. So we know that one of the frustrations sometimes around impact things in particular, lots of ideas, it can mean a lot of things. And then we go back to our kind of desks, back to our jobs and, um, and it's like, where do we even get started? So hopefully we'll get over that let's get started hurdle together today. Um, and you'll be able to go back to your jobs and actually start with some implementation there. Uh, but just to start, we want to really ground ourselves in what is impact? What do we mean? Um, and the way that I define impact is as a change in the status quo is resulting from any direct intervention. So that can be text content, it can be a documentary film, it can be a live in event. But the key being, if there's a change, then it's something we can measure or something we can observe. Um, it started one way, ended another. It doesn't need to be quantitative. We don't have to count it. It doesn't have to be a number, um, but we can observe that change. Um, I think about change in four different ways. There's institutional change. And so often for places like investigative reporting, in particular, we really think about that institutional response, how are government agencies or legislative sessions kind of responding to investigations. Um, it's often the gold standard there. Um, and then in media, we also often think about individual level change. So how is our audience kind of getting knowledge? How are communities becoming more engaged in civic activities or taking action at that again, individual level? Um, in lots of ways, we can measure that. And then also we think about that network level change. Um, so how is content actually contributing to community cohesion? How are advocacy groups or other community-based groups able to use the content and the journalistic work? Uh, to support their own work and, and the um, power that they're building in communities. And then finally, media amplification. Um, sometimes folks refer to this as like agenda setting, but basically you put out a project, it gets a lot of other media attention, it gets um, everybody talking about the story, we think about buzz around content. Um, and for each of these different types of impact or categories of impact, we would use different uh, approaches both to measure what they are and also to talk about our relationship to those impacts. And just to be really clear as we get started, you know, who has all the answers? Um, no one. <laughs> I don't. Um, I know that for sure. Um, but the impacts that matter to your organization might not matter to a different organization. So a lot of this work really is getting clarity around what's your mission, how does that relate to impact, and then what are specific indicators or methods or approaches to measure just those priority areas. So it's not that we need to do everything all of the time, but how to get really clear about what matters most, and then where do we put some energy and resources behind understanding that. Um, and again, so that you have the opportunity to tell your organization's unique story, both internally and externally to different stakeholders. Um, as I've already been alluding to, there, there are also many methods for measurement. There's no one right answer. Um, you know, if we were from the bottom up here, we probably all uh, think about how we use things like Google Analytics, um, maybe financial data internally if we're thinking about increasing donors or, or number of donors or revenue. 
Um, and then there's also qualitative work. And so this is sometimes something as straightforward as a case study. Um, and, you know, working in journalistic organizations, it's often using the same journalistic techniques to say, what, what made this happen? How did our work fit into this ecosystem of change? What was the value add of journalism in that broader system? So again, moving from, you know, strict attribution to contribution in these systems of change. Um, and then there are more kind of technical qualitative methods that you can employ, like a network analysis or content analysis, you know, like we set the agenda, we introduce this idea, um, you could actually prove that or understand it more um, at a more granular level with something like content analysis. The question is always, though, is it worth it? You know, how badly do you need to know that? What's the, the kind of ROI of that information or understanding? Um, and then things like surveys, focus groups, and interviews. Um, and these are some things that, you know, newspapers or TV stations have done over time. And there are a lot of exciting new um, models that nonprofits are putting out now as well, where there are you know, places like Oakland Side and City Bureau that are really thinking about how do you engage directly with your communities to be able to understand the impact that you're having in those communities and together with those folks. This graphic, um, someone recently said there are too many arrows on it, and that is probably true, and I'm not a, an overly visual thinker myself, but in some ways, um, or not in some ways, I resisted reducing the number of arrows because I think that that is the story of impact. It is not unidirectional. It is not that, you know, it's individual and then it kind of ladders up to institutional change. Sometimes it goes in the opposite direction. Um, arrows flow all over the place. And so again, one of the goals for both understanding what your impact is and then doing some learning is to be able to figure out like, are the, the systems or the patterns similar for all of our stories? Or is it that for different topic areas, we see different kinds of patterns of impact um, or, or whatever it is, but having a kind of holistic view and going into it with a lot of questions and an open mind about what those processes might look like, again, helps us understand what works best and ultimately, hopefully, will help both generate new resources by telling the story and use those resources um, as effectively as possible and efficiently as possible because we won't be just throwing, you know, the proverbial spaghetti at the wall, but we'll have a sense for kind of what works. Um, there's this table and it's a little bit hard to read because it's small and that doesn't matter too, too much. But the point is that if you have an idea for what your priority impact areas or outcomes are, that then you can map the right indicators to those. So I, you know, I think often with um, digital analytics in particular, it can feel overwhelming, right? We've got Google Analytics, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. And like we can measure almost everything that happens online and the question becomes, but what actually matters for thinking about impact, maybe it's not that we need to know how many page views we are because we're not trying to understand reach. But we want to know how many people are learning something through our content. And so we're going to use average session duration as the proxy because it's actually means someone's spending time with the stories and it's easier to make that kind of leap to they probably learn something. Um, so this table will share some resources at the end. There's a deck that has this in it. It's not exhaustive. And the idea is not that any one organization would measure anything. Again, it's more of a demonstration of how would you go through and actually eliminate measurement of a bunch of things and come up with those key indicators. And so last, before I turn this over to Sonia, just when you're thinking about your impact strategy, really starting um, not with what am I gonna measure, but starting with what do I wanna see happen in the world? What does my organization already notice is happening and where do we see success? Um, and then prioritizing of all of this great stuff we see happening, what matters most to us or where do we have the biggest questions? Um, and then from there, you can really get into the nitty gritty of what are some of those indicators or methods to actually go about measurement. Um, and to keep in mind that qualitative indicators count, um, qualitative data are data, and in some cases, it's even more meaningful than quantitative data. Um, and so we don't need to discount, you know, those stories of impact off the bat. Instead, think about how can we turn that into a qualitative data set. Um, and then finally, what we're hopefully going to do today is to just start small and get started. It doesn't have to be a huge impact framework to start. You can start with like one or two things that you really want to know a little bit more about and get going on that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sonia. We can talk about this from a much more you know, concrete uh, perspective. Hey there. So it, it's a good thing to just start with like, why should you care about, you know, investing in impact? 
Uh, and I come from Voice of OC and we have a, a small group of us. And so us investing resources into something means that it's really meaningful and investing in impact um, is really, really helpful for our organization. It keeps the whole team on mission. It keeps everybody on point of what things matter and what things are just noise out there because in the digital world, there's plenty of noise of, uh, as Lindsay talked about, like various analytics that you can think about and you could spend all day just talking about data points. And that sometimes is just, there's a lot of things that just don't matter for your organization. Uh, it forms editorial uh, engagement and organizational priorities and strategies. It helps everybody look at their long list of things to do and think about what matters most and where they should really invest their time and be meaningful and intentful. Uh, it demonstrates unique value to foundations and sponsors. That is a direct relation to your bottom line, to your business strategy, to either getting new grants and new support from major funders or just maintaining that level of support so that it can demonstrate your results to people who are giving you money. And it proves why individuals should donate to your organization. I think that's the biggest immediate thing that I have seen in being more consistent about measuring and reporting out impact for us. So qualitative versus quantitative, these are just two kind of examples so that you can see. Uh, on the left, you can see the ProPublica annual report. Uh, it has you know short kind of, you know, summaries of qualitative kind of like stories. Um, and these things can be written by a journalist and, you know, they can just look objectively at like things that happen as a direct result of your reporting. And that really helps tell that story. And that annual report is really helpful for people on, you know, your internal staff to think about, to stop and reflect and say, hey, that story got this public record to the public or, this story got more public to be engaged in the next you know, local government meeting. On the right, these are actually indicators from our GuideStar page. And you, know, you can see number of donors lending, which shows our reach and people who are willing to put their money on the line to support our work, community editorials published, which goes towards our civic engagement goals and you know, news stories published. It really is just some different metrics where you can see that it's beyond just page views that matters now. Here is a look at impacts uh, and different ways that we are using this at Voice of OC. The orange bubbles are the ones that show things that we are actively doing and the gray you can see are things that are on the horizon for us. So inside the newsroom posts are communication posts we do on our website and disseminate across all channels. And those really help inform people of what we are doing, what is on the horizon for us, explaining how things happened and the backstory uh, of the other things that we're doing, our impact marketing page takes people quickly through like what, you know, what general impacts have we had in the community. And that is something where I would explain that our impact marketing pages, they are all just an iterated process. Uh, just never feel like you have to build a beautiful website page and it's going to be perfect and you have to spend a year building it and it will just live on in perpetuity. Uh, realize that there is no perfect and you just work on your first draft and you make the best thing that you can at that moment and you just continue to iterate at whatever speed you can. It doesn't matter how fast you progress, it matters that you progress in the right direction. Uh, GuideStar metrics, if you have a GuideStar page, I would suggest just starting with, you know, even just two or three indicators uh, that are, you know, key performance indicators that you can measure that relate to your mission. And measuring those and putting those on the page gives pot potential donors or even existing donors who might invest more in you and you know just a, a data kind of basis of what you're looking at verbal mentions at live events uh it's always important when we do live podcasts when we do in-person events even when we do presentations to schools that we're always you know plugging our latest impacts so that people can get beyond just our marketing messages but into like real things that have been accomplished recently. And that's what really gets people invested in our mission and our work. Award entries, uh, our impact statements. Last year, I was really consistent about reporting out what impacts we had. And then in the beginning of this year, when I needed to submit for awards, it was really easy to pull together 
our impacts that we made on coronavirus and access to public records and increased government transparency and access to databases and informing the public and increasing civic engagement. So it was, that feels like a lot to do after a year and especially last year. And so it was like a gift to myself, you know, when I was regularly documenting impact last year, it was just sort of like something I could tuck away and access when I needed it. Uh, donation prompts. We write donation prompts regularly on our website and we compel people to donate through those. And the more donation prompts you write, the better you get. Uh, my first ones were probably more journalism centric and I've gotten better. And the more that you write these, instead of just at Newsmatch, the better you'll be, the more specific you can be. If you write it at the end of the year, generally about the mission and what you did, it just won't be really specific. It won't be detailed enough. It can't really give those things that people can visualize or understand and see demonstrated in front of them. So the more often that you write those, I feel like the more beneficial it is. Uh, and then donor newsletters. I work with our development director, Meg Waters, who writes our monthly newsletters. And these are a really great way to just consistently be informing people about their past, um, you know, impacts on our organization's work and then future ones. Uh, I'm working towards kind of one sheet monthly reports that are kind of visualized for internal and even for our board, uh, an internal database of impacts that will be, will be really helpful for our grant process and other kind of reporting processes that we have. A metrics dashboard and making sure that that's something that people who are not nerds like me will understand and they can visually quickly look at what they need to instead of just the C that is Google Analytics. And then annual reports is something that I'm working towards too. And here you can see just some of our do donation prompts from last year and even early this year. And these were the ones that were the most successful from a financial standpoint. Uh, in the absence of a vaccine, information is the best medicine. I didn't write that. I didn't say that. I attended a conference last year. I think it might have been in INN days. And somebody said that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to write a donation prompt right now. It was just so compelling. And I could see in my very eyes that week, that day, stories that our reporter Spencer Custodio had written that were giving people the essential information they needed so that they could make informed decisions about their lives. Not because we made the decision for them, but this donation prompt resulted in the biggest boost that we've seen yet of new recurring donors uh, who we call our sustainers and for people who just giving for a first time donation. Uh, stepping up to support our tenacious, tenacious local reporting, that one also really was successful and holding your officials accountable. That's something where I would say that is highly on the Voice of OC mission. And so a lot of these donation prompts, which I always start not from what's a unique value that we have, what's my marketing message. I look at our recent impacts and work my way forward where I say, even the one I wrote last night based on our impacts over the past week, I looked at what are the things that are impactful this week and then say, what does that what is the facet of that? How can I tell people that that was impactful? And here you can see, these are messages from our donor newsletter written by the talented Meg. Uh, you can see that we're talking about at the top right, um, our work on homelessness and you know just what our events kind of impact they're having in the community. We had uh, a story on an asphalt factory and you could directly see people at city council meetings, people you know, writing in public comment and people writing community opinion letters about this. And it directly led to changes that there's gonna be now actual uh, studies. Uh, so these, the donor newsletter helps give an even more insider view of the impacts we're having. And here you can see that over the past year, these are actually a little bit better. These are things I reported from the beginning part of this year. So subscribers up, donors up, and sustainers up. And every single time we get a new sustainer, I was just telling Jeffrey, we got eight new recurring donors just overnight. And you know, every single time we get one of those pings of somebody new, it's, man, there's somebody else who believes in our mission. There's somebody else who feels like they're part of this. So I'll pass it over to Lindsay. 
Awesome. Yeah, so we've got we have an activity now. I'm wondering if maybe we should just pause for a second for any questions before we jump into it, because I see quite a few popping up in the chat. So um, Jeffrey, I don't know if you have like a plan for order. Can I just go through them? I can I can throw one at you that kind of uh, caught my eye. Uh, this is uh, from Jennifer. It's, uh, she would love to see how you set up your qualitative impacts database, one sheet monthly reports, and marketing page. So what I like to do is it's actually the way that I used to work on infographics, uh, which is my real passion in life. And I, I look at our mission statement and what we're all about, why we were founded, why we do this work. And I start thinking, okay, how could I measure that? What can I hold up a yardstick to? Anecdotes about our impacts, that's something that just kind of flows because our reporters every day are having real impacts. So writing, you know, quick statements about things that, you know, public records we made accessible, other impacts that we've had in the community. That part comes really easy for us because our reporters are just every day doing that. The harder thing is for me trying to look at, okay, how can we measure that? And what are a few kind of indicators without going crazy that can lead people to that? And so I would say uh, it's, I, I would start with your mission statement and work your way. Very good. And Lindsay, this might be appropriate for you almost in follow-up to that as well. This is from Mary at iNewsource. Um, Mary's curious about how you'd fill out that chart that you had showed on one of your slides, but more specifically, what would the inputs be or how do you go about determining those? Yeah, that's a great, great question. I think related to a bit about the qualitative database as well. Um, so I think that the key is for any organization to understand, again, both the kinds of content you're putting out and where you're understanding what reach and engagement looks like directly with the content itself. And then where are you seeing evidence of, you know, real world change kind of that's changes happening offline that doesn't show up anywhere in your analytics. And so for the first part, it's a bit easier where you can say, okay, here's access to all of the analytics we have, which actually map to our goals. Again, like we want people to know more. Okay. How do we think about time on page or if we're putting up um, video content, how do we think about actual like rate of playthrough or average video watch times? Um, so in some ways that to me feels um, like you have access to it. It's more about mapping the right indicators to your, your approach. Um, for that offline impact that doesn't show up, I, I love seeing you know, from Voice of OC like real world mentions and meetings, like when the, the content's referred back to. Um, those are things that are a bit trickier, but if you notice that it's happening regularly and then you can say like, that's a thing that to us is an indicator and we're gonna start proactively trying to count it or, or just track it each time. Um, and you might have some sort of a database where you can actually document it. And so uh, we have a platform called the Impact Tracker that's a qualitative database. Um, other organizations have built similar products um, in the resources sheet we'll share. There's um, Resolve Philly has made an open source Airtable that you can make a copy of and customize. There are a lot of different approaches out there. Um, and it might be that one works well for your organization or it might just be worth looking at them and then figuring out, actually I can build this as like a Google form into a Google spreadsheet for my organization to again, just get started today, get started small and see what happens. Um, but for me, it's all about what, what do you want to see happen? What are you already observing? And then how do you actually go about um, creating a system to measure that or to track things over time in a relatively consistent sort of way? Um, and in, in some ways, I mean, I, I think people are always like, well, what's the, what's the platform? How do we do it? And, and it's the people part that's the challenge. It's like that consistency question. How do you get people to actually track it um, in an ongoing way? Uh, and then you can kind of build the process or the workflow around that. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I was just going to piggyback on that to say that just to underline the point of start small, just avoid trying to reach for perfection, avoid trying to take on things that you think you should be doing at a certain level when you don't have the resources for it. Start small, start on the things that are most important to you. Great. And maybe that's the perfect segue into the next part here, which is um, actually going to be hands-on. Um, and we're going to ask you to do a couple of things. So we're going to start by thinking about what does impact mean to your organization? 
Um, and you'll want to be inclusive. Like, again, what do you already see happening? What evidence do you see of impact? What makes your organization excited? What are you communicating about with your audience or potentially with your donors? Um, then you're going to set some priorities. So you might write down like five things and you might say, well, what we care about most um, is, uh, you know, again, our audience learning more, or we, we want to know about our community being more civically engaged. That's our priority. So you'll pick one or maybe two things. Oops. Um, and then last, you'll start to just think about how do we already know or how might we know? What would we need to do? Is it that we need to do an audience survey to ask if anyone has participated in a public meeting as a result of our work? Or is it that we should do some focus groups or, or um, whatever? And so Jeffrey has kindly dropped in a link to a worksheet that you can open and make a copy of. Um, and you'll notice the right hand side of the worksheet when you open it is blank. This is a sample one that I, I went ahead and filled out just to try to um, anticipate some of the questions that might come up. But so you're going to think about what does impact mean again and then drop in a couple of things. I have some examples here, um, setting one or two priorities. So for, for my sample, I said audience participating in civic life and then an internal kind of impact goal of staff being more reflective of the local community. And then down below, I brainstormed just a few quick ideas for how would we actually start to get started documenting and reporting those impacts. Um, so I said a survey, of both of our audience and of our staff. Um, so we're gonna ask that everybody goes ahead. Oh, I see someone saying the bit.ly is not working. Um, I just copy pasted it again, oh. now it's working. Awesome, thank you. Um, so we'll go ahead, we'll take just a few minutes, maybe like, five minutes. I think we'll give everybody enough time. We'll be right here. So if people want to jump in with questions, um, feel free to do that. And then we're going to come back and kind of ask you all what worked, um, where do you have questions, what's like a, a, a challenge that you're coming up against, and um, can exactly have a, a full group conversation <laughs> with this size group. But we do want to kind of troubleshoot in real time what some of the things that come up for people are. So go ahead get started on that. And if, again, if you have questions, jump in. It's got a, a question um, in the chat about, you know, we're a small outfit, you know, with, with not that many people and how do we even kind of get started? And I think that's such an important question. Um, and yeah, Sonia, I think probably has some thoughts there, but it was like, <laughs> do we make one person be in charge of it? And I would say yes, but Sonia, maybe you want to share a little bit about some of the challenges around the human capacity and capital needed for this work. Yeah, I think I would just suggest uh, coming from a, a newsroom where a lot of us do a lot of very th very various things and we're very busy, it is really hard uh, to make time for it. Um, if this you can directly as a group realize is, is tied to your reader revenue and to future and sustaining your grant and foundation revenue, you will find time for that as opposed to other things. Uh, I'll often have discussions internally where we'll say, we can't do more, but we can change what we're doing. We can adapt. So if this is important and you feel like you should be doing, st spending some of your time on impact, then you need to find something else that isn't bringing as much value to your organization that you need to adjust or stop doing. Uh, I would just say it's not, a good thing to just spend nights and weekends working on it, even though I've done that. Uh, it's, if this is valuable, you just have to adjust your other things, but also just start small. You know, some of the different impact things and white papers that I've read, they look glorious and it looks amazing and, and exciting, but that's not my only job. And so I just keep, you know, really realistic on it. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you'll just start doing one new thing and as that becomes more consistent and regularized, you can then take on another little project in the future. And a lot of this, I think, is more about choosing and thinking strategically about impact and measurement instead of just on, sometimes you'll spend a lot more time on the noise of all of the different things you can measure and talk about. So this, is, this can actually help you simplify and concentrate and focus uh, over time. 
Yeah, and one of the, the things, especially if you're a smaller newsroom where you have syndicated content and you feel like you're, it's hard to know, the audience maybe isn't that large and social, um, and you want to know about the impact, it's thinking about that media amplification and where your content is showing up. And if it is you know, freely available under Creative Commons, um, some ways you can know about that are things like using um, something as simple as Google Alerts, which you, you may already have set up. If you don't, that's like free, easy. You can do it right now while we're on this on this Zoom together. And then if you want to get deeper thinking about there are PR platforms out there that have kind of more advanced capabilities when it comes to the kinds of um, word searches that can be done in other media, those do cost money. And so, you know, uh, all of this requires some sort of resource. Um, and, you know, when thinking about how you're building grant budgets, how you're thinking about support for the work, ensuring that 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 measurement piece, both from a strategy, how are you going to think about distribution partnerships or engagement or a live event or whatever, all the way through to that measurement and learning and then communicating the impact piece are part of those budgets. And I think that is something that you know foundations know and are aware of, but sometimes doesn't make it into the conversation. And so I would just say, start small, start whatever, and start building it into every budget so that you can generate a little bit more income so that it can support more human time for the work as well. These examples are so great that are in the chat. Um, and I'm would, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, if you're struggling for other things of thinking about like what impacts your organization has that compel people to become loyal and to follow you, you can always do that just through not even a big toner survey. You can just ask people who have given you money or who became subscribers to tell you the one thing that compelled them to join you, read you, donate to you. And those can in turn be things that you think about as impacts. Yeah, and I see another question about how to count distribution through media partners. I mean, I think you can do something as simple as, as literal counting, you know, the number of stories that have been republished um, and actually, I'm going to point to INN, and I know that they've published some really great reports about some of their own Amplify projects that are a great example of how you can track where stories are being picked up and how you can use different language around them. Um, and there was, yeah, so I would say, I, th I think I saw Sarah's name on here. So Sarah, Masello, if you want to drop that report into the chat for folks to see, we can add it to the, the impact resources page. Um, but being able to count the number of stories that are reprinted or republished. And then I know there are often um, stories aren't fully reprinted, but that other media outlets are reporting on the same issues. You know, this is a huge challenge, I think, that some of the credit uh, for the original reporting with nonprofits can, can um, be difficult to see sometimes because you have larger commercial outlets that will kind of come in and, and take over the story. And so even being able to point to that, and, and sure, it can be frustrating, but also to say, like, look at the value we're bringing to this ecosystem. We're the ones breaking the story and doing all of the legwork that then gets, you know, broad broadcast widely by you know, local TV or something, and thinking of that as a benefit and part of your impact story that you can really highlight for donors and for your audience, um, I think is, is um, important. Great. I'm wondering if anyone has any kind of questions too, if you were coming up on any roadblocks, if you're, you know, we're getting some in here um, about the type of, you know, uh, things that you can and can't measure, but I'm just wondering if anyone has any specific kind of questions there that they want to throw out to the group. Throw out there, uh, if you're, you're having trouble thinking of ways to measure your impact, try to think creatively. Uh, things that, you know, we can measure that, you know, we're already doing that are impactful is linking to public records and documents, uh, informing people on how they can participate in local meetings how they can submit public comment, and even just you can measure how often you make that available in your stories. Uh, you can measure how many anonymous tips you're receiving, which shows that you're an integral part of the community. Um, there's a lot of things that you can think creatively related to your mission that is different and will set you apart. Uh, so also I would suggest think about your organization specifically because then it'll make your reports to grants, funders, and donors really unique uh, than other people's. 
And is your comment that, you know, things like policy change um, can be slow to happen and they come in fits and starts and absolutely true and, and other types of community cohesion, thinking about how the work is actually helping to bridge divides in communities. All of that is really slow work for the most part. Um, and sometimes I think we're too quick to say, oh, there was the policy change, especially like for investigative reporting or, you know, someone's paying attention to this issue now. And then um, we walk away and we say it was an impact and success and, you know, it doesn't account for potential backsliding and implementation. And so like all of this change is long term work. And um, I, that is absolutely true. And, and in my mind, all the more reason to continually trying to be tracking this work, actually like just got off a call right before this with the legacy kind of um, supporter of news. And they were saying that one of the challenges when they're thinking about how to over time track this really long-term change is that it becomes an oral history project instead of an impact measurement project. And I just thought, isn't that right? And so then you have somebody who leaves the organization and they take all of that history and knowledge with them, all that institutional knowledge and so coming up with, you know, a system internally to track this change over time, I think it's just incredibly important in part because the change often takes so long and our memories uh, don't serve us well in those situations. So absolutely. Um, and to make sure that that's part of any conversation, particularly with grant funded work about expectations for what type of impact is reasonable to be thinking about and on what time period. Because often if it's, if it's projects that are grant supported, the impact may happen actually well after <laughs> the grant period. Uh, I see a question here from Sue about what impacts uh, we find most resonate with our funders. I would say for Voice of OC, which uh, this is kind of unique to our organization, I would say public transparency. Our biggest push is on making, you know, making accessible information before those meetings happen, providing access to how to provide public comment, how to get involved and engaged in local government. That is our bread and butter. That is what we were founded on. And so all of our people, that is what they most recognize us for. Uh, increasing transparency and access to government, I would say is our biggest thing. I also saw Barbara uh, wrote a note about uh, donor testimonials. That has been really helpful for us. Uh, we, we received kind of these love letters from people. And then when we started asking people just what compelled you to donate today, uh, when we would send a private, personal and direct, not automated email, thanking people for their donation, we received really compelling messages. And then most of the time, those people are willing for us to recirculate those. And that has been really, I would say really a big part of our success uh, because the best thing about like awards from impartial judges and from your donors and your readers is that it's not you saying good things about yourself, which as a journalist, it always makes me uncomfortable, but I'm getting better at it. It's always better for other people to be saying good things about your organization and your impacts. I would just say that we can absolutely keep the conversation going beyond this uh, panel. Lindsay and I both have our uh, Twitter handles on there and our emails on the bit.ly resource. And we're always reachable if you have questions. Thank you all so much. And so impressed by all of the examples of impact and the ways you all are thinking about measurement in the chat. Um, it's really great to learn from you all too.